Many people are turning more bullish on the economy with the possibility of an effective vaccine. The virus isn't the problem. It is not what's making the economy sick. All of the Federal Reserve stimulus and money printing is driving the economy ill. And the vaccine isn't going to make it okay. The hedge funds have never been more net long in history as they are right now. So the guys that run the hedge funds, supposedly the smartest people in the room, have never been more optimistic and more bullish, and they are just long. So, in other words, hedge funds have never been less hedged than they are today. So, they're really not hedge funds at all, they are risk funds. And when everybody is loaded up on one side of the trade, there's a pretty good indication that the markets are getting ready to move in the other direction. What is providing the impetus for all this bullishness? The Fed, and the idea that QE Infinity is here to stay. That is the only thing driving stock prices. JP Morgan recently projected GDP in Q1 of 2021 would be negative. But they are predicting the economy will come roaring back in Q2 and Q3 of next year. Why? Obviously, it's because of massive government stimulus that they're expecting, probably even more from the Fed than from Congress, because I don't know how long it's going to take the Biden administration and Congress to actually enact their initial stimulus. If we do have a negative GDP for the first quarter, that will put even more political pressure on Congress, in particular the Republicans in the Senate, assuming that they win the Georgia special elections, to compromise and deliver more stimulus. So, it's the anticipation of this stimulus which is driving the market. A lot of people think a vaccine might ease the need for stimulus. But the real burden is not the pandemic, but all the debt the economy accumulated while the Fed was trying to fight the pandemic. It's the pandemic cure that is far more harmful to the economy than the disease. So, even after the disease is gone, the cure is going to linger and is going to continue to do damage because we accumulated all this extra debt, because the Fed's balance sheet is now so much bigger, because the stock market bubble is so much bigger, because the real estate bubble has gained new strength, because everybody has more leverage than they did before. And of course, the US economy is going to be less efficient in this post-pandemic world as US companies are still going to have to be covering the costs of being able to prepare for the next lockdown or the next virus that comes up. We already know what the playbook is. Simply put, we have a less efficient, more highly indebted, more highly leveraged economy that will need stimulus more than ever. We don't need the stimulus to deal with the disease. We need more stimulus to deal with the cure. That's what we're addicted to. We're addicted to the cure. It's not about the disease. It's all about the cure. The Fed will likely start focusing QE on the longer end of the yield curve and may well eventually own the entire long end. Private investors will be wary of holding long-term bonds because of the risk of rising interest rates. Of course, eventually, the central bank could well own the entirety of the bond market. The Fed currently holds a record percentage of US debt. Last week, Fed data showed another $67.7 billion added to the balance sheet. It now stands at $7.243 trillion. Meanwhile, the money supply increased by $172.4 billion. This is why the US dollar is so weak. And it's going to get a lot weaker. At some point prices will collapse, but not in dollars. The Fed will print enough money to keep that from happening. But they will collapse priced in gold. The Fed will stop the nominal collapse in asset prices or goods prices. But they will cause an even bigger collapse in real terms pricing those assets and goods in gold. So, if you hide out in US treasuries, you get wiped out. That's not a safe haven. The real safe haven would be real money, which would be gold. After this new wave of lockdowns, most people will accept any solution because they will be so desperate. When people become desperate enough, those in power can get most of them to do just about anything. The first wave of lockdowns knocked us into the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression of the 1930s, it sent suicide rates soaring all over the globe, and it plunged millions upon millions of ordinary citizens into a deep state of despair. Now another wave of lockdowns is being instituted all over the planet, and this is going to perfectly set the stage for the solutions that the elite plan to offer all of us in 2021. It has been said that if you want people to be willing to accept a solution, first you have to make them realize that they have a problem. And once this dark winter finally ends, almost everybody will be absolutely desperate to return to their normal lives. 
With each passing day, more extremely harsh restrictions are being imposed. For example, a brand new, stay-at-home order, was just issued in Los Angeles County. All public and private gatherings with anyone outside a single household are now banned in Los Angeles County, as most of the country grapples with an unprecedented surge of the pandemic. The ban will last three weeks, starting Monday and ending December 20th. It would be nice if the lockdown actually does get lifted before the end of the year, but for at least the next three weeks all 10 million people living in LA County will be forced to stay home as much as possible. All 10 million residents are asked to stay home as much as possible and wear face masks when outside, even when exercising at the beach and parks, said the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health, which issued the order last week. On top of that, California Governor Gavin Newsom is warning that he may soon impose much more dramatic, arguably drastic, restrictions for the entire state. California Gov Gavin Newsom just warned that more drastic steps could be taken to contain the virus after the state reported another 15K plus new cases yesterday. The Golden State could be facing much more dramatic, arguably drastic, measures to contain the spread of the virus. The state also broke its record for hospitalized patients yesterday. The state reported 7,415 hospitalizations, with more than 1,700 of those patients in ICUs. The number of hospitalizations broke the state's previous record of 7,170 in July. Unfortunately, we are witnessing similar craziness all over the nation. In New Mexico, the new restrictions that were just instituted created so much panic that people were soon waiting for hours just to get into a supermarket to shop for food. New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham D. has put immense pressure on businesses with her abrupt lockdown order, forcing non-essential businesses to close and creating what has been dubbed modern breadlines, with people waiting two to four hours to enter essential retailers, former GOP Senate candidate Elisa Martinez explained during an appearance on Breitbart News Saturday. After seeing what the first round of lockdowns did to our nation, why would these politicians want to do it again? More than 70 million Americans have filed unemployment claims so far in 2020, more than 40 million could be facing eviction in 2021, and there has been a dramatic spike in suicides during this pandemic. When a 90-year-old woman named Nancy Russell found out that another lockdown was happening in her area, she decided to opt for assisted suicide. According to CTV News, a 90-year-old woman living in Toronto took her own life via medically assisted suicide, the choice made in large part due to the second surge of the cases and a looming period of increased restrictions. As I keep reminding my viewers, there is always hope if you look at the bigger picture and suicide is never the answer to anything. Unfortunately, most people are not getting a message of hope from the mainstream media, and Russell decided that the months ahead were going to be too bleak in her nursing home for her to be able to handle. Residents eat meals in their rooms, have activities and social gatherings cancelled, family visits curtailed or eliminated. Sometimes they are in isolation in their small rooms for days. These measures, aimed at saving lives, can sometimes be detrimental enough to the overall health of residents that they find themselves looking into other options. Just as we are hitting a low point with this pandemic, authorities all over the globe are announcing that vaccines will soon be available. In fact, it is being reported that as many as 10 different vaccines could be available by the middle of 2021. 10 vaccines could be available by the middle of next year if they win regulatory approval, but their inventors need patent protection, the head of the Global Pharmaceutical Industry Group said on Friday. As soon as the public can get them, it is inevitable that millions upon millions of people will rush out to get their shots so that they can return to their normal lives. But what they aren't telling you is that these new vaccines are entirely different from vaccines that you may have gotten previously. These new mRNA vaccines will actually hijack your cells if you take them. When Moderna was just finishing its phase one trial, the Independent wrote about the vaccine and described it this way. It uses a sequence of genetic RNA material produced in a lab that, when injected into your body, must invade your cells and hijack your cells protein making machinery called ribosomes to produce the viral components that subsequently train your immune system to fight the virus. In this case, Moderna's mRNA-1273 is programmed to make your cells produce the infamous spike protein that gives the virus its crown-like appearance for which it is named, wrote The Independent. Under normal circumstances, very few people would sign up to have their cells, 
hijacked, but at this point millions upon millions of people will be so desperate for a solution, that they will take a vaccine no matter what the long-term consequences might be. And if you don't take one of the vaccines, you may soon find that you aren't able to fly internationally. The International Air Transport Association IATA, announced this week it is in the final phase of development for what it hopes will be universally accepted documentation that in turn could boost confidence among wary travelers. The digital health pass would include a passenger's testing and vaccine information and would manage and verify information among governments, airlines, laboratories and travelers. If these new, digital vaccine passports, are implemented for international travel, it is probably just a matter of time before they are required for domestic travel as well. Of course there are lots of people out there that are trying to sound the alarm about all of this, but UN Communications Director Melissa Fleming says that her organization has already recruited an army of 110,000 information volunteers to combat the spread of misinformation. Fleming told the World Economic Forum that hashtag pledge to pause and verified have recruited 110,000 information volunteers thus far. She said, we equip these information volunteers with the kind of knowledge about how misinformation spreads and ask them to serve as kind of digital first responders. Fleming has stated elsewhere that the UN has reached out to member states, UN media partners, celebrity supporters, and businesses to help us disseminate to the millions we will need to reach with the campaign. They want to control what you think as they lead you into a dystopian future that will ultimately turn into a complete and utter nightmare. The truth is that none of us will be going back to our normal lives ever again. But the elite will continue to hold that carrot out there in order to get you to do what they want, and millions upon millions of people will fall for it. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.